and welcome back to Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for joining me as I explore the amazing, incredible, global, wide world of pens. And yes, I had to treat myself to a pen in 2023. So this is my first pen of 2023. This is from Italy. The customs value was 20 euros. It came with custom documentation and I had to sign for it. I opened up the pack gauge, and we see some nice reusable, recyclable packing material, some Italian newspaper. And then we see the pen and a little bit of bubble wrap and then a tissue. It survived its long journey in great shape. So here's the pen. And you may say, Chris, I don't recognize it. Well, the name is on the clip. And this is my third Phil Cow. And we'll explain why I have this pen, why it was my first buy of 20, well, actually, to the end of 2022, but I'm going to call it my 2023 pen. So let's explore it. And maybe look at some of the other Phil Cows that I have. So to me, it's challenging buying a pen like this on eBay with photographs. Here's what it looked like in the listing. I've always been a fan of, of a lapis type style. And I have to admit, when I first held this pen in my hand, it felt substantial. It feels good. And I really, really love those veins kind of golden veins with a little bit of pearlescence to them that is in this resin. Could it be celluloid? I don't know. And I'm not really critical of what it is. I'm more interested in how it feels in the hand, how it looks to the eye. And that cap band is sterling, which was listed in the eBay. It's a standard steel clip. Stiff, sturdy, but springy and flexible. The cap comes off in about two and a quarter turns. And we'll see a steel nib. The other Philco that I use regularly has a gold nib in it. But this is considered to be flexible. And let's do the thumb test. Eh, it's certainly not flexible as far as I would define it, but we'll see how it writes. Could be a little soft. What's the filling mechanism? Well, you take off the blind cap, and it is a real blind cap, and you'll see a button that activates a sack, I'm assuming. Interesting uh, knurls there, so you could take it apart easily, which is always good, but I'm not taking this apart. We're going to ink it up. I think I can find a suitable ink that I'll enjoy. And put nib to paper and see how it writes. But just in closing, I'd just like to say this pen feels great in my hand. It fits well. And it posts fine. Nice and deep. Just a minor change to the balance, but adds some decent weight to the pen, which is good in my mind. I like the way that that logo lines up with the nib so you get to see it when you're writing. Always a good design trait. So I enjoy how the nib writes. I certainly wouldn't call it flexy. It's a little soft, 
but it is very smooth, good ink flow, and I do like this Tremel number no. three ink. Complements the pen well. Oh, I said I was going to take the pen apart, but this design I think is such a classic that I needed to show it to you. So this is basically just a piece of that acrylic resin, machined or celluloid, sorry, machined to work as a top finial to hold in the clip and also works to seal up against the nib. I think it's interesting to see that matte finish here versus a polished finish. You don't get to see that comparison very often. And if we take a look at this top finial, we'll see that it fits up very well against that section, as it should, giving you a very small area for that nib to sit in when you're not writing. Keeps the nib nice and wet, ready to write as soon as you uncap it. Hope you enjoyed that little ex exploration of the Phil Cow Columbia. Here are my three Phil Cows. This one I got at the Boston Pen Show a few years ago. I just got it because it has that filigree pattern reminded me of a Waterman's pen, which I have similar one. And because I like this pen, I started doing some searching and I found the seller on eBay and I purchased this Ogiva which has a great resin and a nice 14 karat nib. This pen has been inked up since I first got it and it's been used in many, many letters. I enjoy writing with it very much. So then 2023 encouraged me to buy this pen and I'm very, very happy with it. It has a similar type of feel to the Ogiva it just feels substantial, feels good in the hand, excellent ergonomics, and even though it's only a steel nib, it writes very, very well. I like my fill cows. Here's the ink that I put in the pen. It's a very nice blue, and it has some blue glitter in it. I think it'll work well and complement that great resin the pen is made from. So now we're going to have some dimensions. For those of you that are interested in the engineering details of this pen. And I found an interesting review online. We're going to put a link in the description. And there will also be a link to the other videos of the other Phil Cal pens that I have for those that might be interested. So I've had this pen for a couple days now. I've written with it a fair bit. And it continues to grow on me and continues to be a pen that I enjoy picking up and writing with, which is why I was prompted to purchase it from eBay, from that seller. He's a great seller. Here's some examples of some other pens that he has. I think eventually the Phil Cows will disappear because they're not being made anymore. And this Phil Cow might be the next one I buy. We'll see. So let's do some live writing and bid you adieu. So I think you know that I enjoy writing with this, and some pens just grow on you, and this certainly is one of those. And I love this ink color. Yes, I do use an ink color that is similar to the pens, because that way when I'm looking for a particular ink color, I can just look at the color of the pen. And as we all know, I have probably close to 50 pens inked up most of the time. Is this nib flexible? The answer is, yeah, it opens up a little bit. Not as flexible as the number eight nib on my X159, but then it's not meant to be. But it just, it just feels good on paper. 
So one of the things that you'll notice in my reviews, you'll never see me write anything about some dog jumping over a fox or something because, yeah, just not fun. Kind of boring to see the same thing written over and over and over again. But I do use squiggly lines because they're representative of what you would do when you were put, writing a letter. You know, whether you do print or script. You know, there are different writing styles. Each of them may be more suitable for some nibs versus others, but pff, I vary. Like I move my fingers around the section. This is a very nice section. I love that big flare out at the end. Again, <laughs> I like the pen. And I definitely find that resin to be very, very nice. Good business look. Not that I have anything to do with business anymore because I am retired. Speaking of that, we've reached the end of this video. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. I hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying all of your pens. Enjoying putting down some ink on paper or other material of choice. So, be happy. Enjoy life. We're going to say bye. Ah, great nib. I really like the line it puts down. And you can skip if you don't keep the nib on paper. And I think I'm running low on ink because I've been writing with the pen a lot. Bye-bye.